Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. And today I'm going to go over a touchy subject. Uh, there's a lot of people on the fence about what you should and shouldn't do as far as a mask. But today I want to go over the proper and improper uh, mask wearing, I guess you could call it, techniques <laughs> in pest control. So whether you believe a mask works or whether you believe a mask doesn't work um, for whatever purpose, I can't be too specific because I don't want YouTube to strike down my video, but I, I thought this was something that was important. I, uh, I talk to other pest control professionals uh, almost on a daily basis, and so I thought I would give a little bit of advice. So, a little bit of background. Also, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up if you really like it consider subscribing to my channel. It really does help the, the, the channel out a lot. The more people subscribe, the more people that seem to get this information. Uh, and it's, it's good information. I think that my channel has helped a lot of people over the years. It's been four, over four years now that I've been on YouTube. And so I want to give people information they can use and information that is valuable. So if you like it, consider sharing it around and, uh, you know, on with the video. So let's talk about wearing a face mask. So basically a face mask is a covering below the eyes, covers the nose and the mouth, um, and so that if you were to sneeze or cough, the idea is that it will catch it in the mask, be all gross and nasty on your face, but it won't splash out onto other people and you won't infect other people with whatever kind of diseases or sicknesses or germs you may be carrying. Basically, it's a way to catch the cooties and keep the cooties on you. So anyway, <laughs> to try to be light on the whole, uh, I know nobody likes wearing them, but uh, it's been mandated now that we need to wear them. So if, especially if you work around the public. So what do you do as a pest control technician? Uh, should you or should you not wear a mask? How should you wear a mask? What kind of mask should you wear? So this is what I'm gonna go over in this uh, video. So when masks, were mandated back in March. I was one of the professions that was impacted. Uh, it's kind of a gray area because I do a lot of outside work uh, around the inside and outside of people's homes, but mostly outside around their windows and doors to try to eliminate spiders and roaches and fleas and ticks and all kinds of bugs and stuff that will come into the house. So bugs live outside. They don't live indoors. Once you eliminate the indoor infestation, it's really about a really good thorough exterior treatment. Now, a lot of my customers have moved towards exterior only service, which is fine because that's going to eliminate most of their problem anyway. But what do you do in a situation where you must go inside the house and you have to deal with maybe a cockroach infestation, maybe bed bug problems? What do you do? How do you protect yourself and how do you protect your customers? So my whole motto in my business because I'm Green Acres. You know, I, yes, it's Green Acres. It's a play off of the old TV show, but my last name is Acres and that was my nickname in high school. People used to call me Green Acres or Green all the time because of my last name. So, but I still want to be uh, safe. I want to be professional and I don't want my customers to get the impression that I'm going to come in and harm them in any way whether it's with the pesticides I use, the rodenticides that I use, or, uh, you know, if I'm sick, I don't want to make people sick. I may not know I'm sick. You know, if I'm asymptomatic, I may be spreading a disease and not know it. So what do you do? How do you do it? So what spurned this video was back in March, April timeframe, I was servicing a home for mice. Now I was wearing a uh, respirator. So I, I do have respirators. I use respirators for, for, there are some chemicals that require the use of a respirator. And if I use a respirator, you're not gonna be in the house because you know, you're not gonna be allowed to be in the house at all, typically when you're doing a pesticide application anyway. And so, uh, or at least not in the room with me when I'm applying the chemical. So the, uh, a respirator is used for a space treatment. So if you were gonna do a fog or a bug bomb or something like that, you usually have to wear a respirator when you're applying that type of pesticide so you don't breathe in the particulate and it also does keep you from spreading anything outside of the respirator too to other people so uh, I was wearing a respirator now 
one of the things about a respirator is respirators do inhibit the ability to breathe quite a lot. They're not really designed for you to be working with them on your face all the time. You're going to need to take them off every so often to get a good deep breath and uh, you know replenish your oxygen supply. So uh, I was getting headaches. I was getting dizzy um, because I you know a lot of the work that I do in and out of the house. The the one particular house that I was servicing is a mouse. Uh, house and I have uh, bait stations in their attics and in their uh, basements where the mice were coming in and so I needed to be able to get into the house to service the bait stations um, so while I was in the house it's a three-story house and so you're hiking up and down the steps and I'm wearing the respirator and I'm really working out I mean going up and down the steps over and over and you know for those that don't know I've got a little bit of extra weight on the on the belly so uh, you know it's a lot for me to go up and down the steps with a respirator on. Now normally if I'm not wearing a respirator, I don't have a problem. But I walked out of the house, I got really dizzy, and I almost fell down the steps. And it hit me then, I was thinking, you know, if I have to wear this for however long I have to wear this, then I could end up passing out in somebody's house and it could cause a problem with their homeowner's insurance and that's not something that I want to do. So how do I solve this problem? Well, one of my friends actually uh, crafted two face masks for me to wear when I was working. They're made out of triple line uh, cloth mask, so they're really good at, at you know just like a surgical mask. They're really you, you're not going to get. I couldn't blow a match out. I couldn't blow a lighter. I couldn't. I couldn't blow a piece of dust. I had my cell phone held up like this. I had a little piece of dust on the screen, and I went and I'm not not thinking I had a mask on. I couldn't blow the dust off my phone. So they, it worked really good to not push air out. But here's what was happening. So in pest control, especially on a bed bug job, if you're treating the crown molding in a heavily infested bed bug job where the bed bugs are actually living up near the ceiling and you're spraying above head, the drift from the chemical, you, you do the best you can to keep it from drifting down, but you're gonna get little teeny tiny particulate is gonna come off of that treatment and it's gonna f float down. And it's gonna land on you, possibly. Uh, typically it doesn't, usually you're standing back, but there is always the chance that it's gonna float down and land on you. Well, if you're wearing a face mask, it gets on your face mask and it covers that little piece of cloth that's in front of your mouth. Now, normally, and there are, there are no directions on the pesticide label for what would happen if you get chemical on a face mask. Okay, it, there are some directions on what you would do if you were to saturate your clothing or something like that, but this is a completely different type of a situation. So I'm wearing a face mask, a face covering, like this, and the chemical is getting on the piece of cloth. Now this is something I do take home and I typically wash it with my uniform. And but you can't wash it but once a day because I'm not going to come home and wash my masks over and over and over. And at the time, you couldn't find disposable masks anywhere. So you, you just really didn't have any option but to wear a cloth face covering. And so I would wear the face mask. I was getting horrible headaches. I was finding that I was getting migraines. Uh, migraines and headaches are, are some of the side effects of inhaling pesticides that aren't really designed to be inhaled at all. You can get severe migraines, headaches, nausea, uh, you can have uh, stomach problems, anything that would maybe you know coincide with nervous system issues um, because most of your pesticides you're going to use for insect control are nervous uh, system you know they, they, they do something to the nervous system and that's how they kill the insect and so and in some of them like a cholinesterase inhibitor humans have cholinesterase too so if you're using something like that it can cause problems you can cause health problems and this is something that um, isn't on a pesticide label because no pesticide manufacturer considered that you were going to take and put a face mask on your face and then spray chemical and have it soak into your face mask and even the little teeny tiny droplets doesn't doesn't really amount to much but it mixes with the moisture on your mask already from where you're breathing in and out and then you're breathing in a pesticide so uh, I discovered this and that's why I'm making this video so I'm, I'm now I switched so, so back a couple months ago you could start you could get uh, disposable masks and so <clears throat> I carry disposables I, I usually have one in my pocket I'd pull out and show it to you I don't have one right now but um 
the disposable surgical masks that you can get from like Sam's Club, uh, I think even you can get them even at Ace Hardware now. I think you can get them pretty much anywhere. I've walked into uh, uh, Lowe's and seen them at Lowe's. I've seen them at Home Depot. Um, they pretty much sell them everywhere. So if you're in pest control and you're having a problem with headaches, nausea, uh, and you're wearing a face covering and you're doing inside treatments, because you really should. Now, now, I will admit that when I do an outside treatment, I typically don't wear a face covering because I'm outside and everything that's blowing out of my mouth outside is getting dissipated in the airspace anyway. And I'm not really conversing with people because people don't really stand around you when you're spraying bug spray everywhere. So I don't really have a problem talking with people or conversing with people when I'm outdoors. Um, and besides, if I, if I were outdoors and I'm treating your house, you're not going to be out there anyway because I have told people, I am one to tell people right off and say, hey, go in the house. I got a spray here. I don't want to spray you. I don't want to drift because it does drift down really bad on the outside of the house, especially when you're treating for wasps, hornets. Um, you're doing spiders up in the eaves and stuff. You are going to get some over, uh, some drift down from your soffits. So, uh, you know, hopefully this video has been a help. So, so the overall gist of the video, let me get to that because I haven't really talked about that yet. Um, so I, I gave you all my backstory and explained to you why I started switching to paper face masks. So the, the overall goal is people have a, a weird, um, if you wear like a, like a face shield, I don't, I don't feel like that's going to really do the job that a face mask will do. So I don't wear face shields, I wear face masks. I want the, the perception to be that, that the customer's health is in my best interest, because it absolutely is. I really do look out for my customers as if they were members of my own family. Um, if you called me to come out to your house to do pest control I, uh, and I was sick, I would not come to your house. I will tell you right out, look, I'm sorry, you may have to call another company. I'm sick. I'm not going to come out to your house while I'm sick. And uh, people appreciate that. So you don't want to make people sick. And even if, let's, let's, because I know I'm going to get a lot of hate on this video. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments about, you know, whether they do or don't work because this is not a political video. This is not meant to be some kind of a political stance whether this works or not. But the point is, is that le there has been a fear in people and um, it causes a mental uh, problem. And so it's not that my customers have mental problems, it's that it's it, fear causes mental issues and while health is my top concern mental health is is part of your health as well and if it means that my customer feels safer whether they are or aren't doesn't matter to me what matters to me is that my customer is happy and as long as I have satisfied customers I'm happy so I will do I will go at whatever length that I need to to ensure that the job I do is good, that the, the bugs are dead, and the customer doesn't have any complaint from both insect problems or problems with me. I want them to know that I care about them and I'm looking out for them. That is why I wear a face covering. So what are the best options for you? If you are in pest control and you are applying pesticides inside someone's house, then this video is for you. If you're living in your own house doing pest control, then you know you probably don't have to worry about you know wearing a face covering because you live there. But if you're applying pesticides in someone else's home, they have problems with bed bugs, they have problems with roaches, they have problems with fleas. You need to go inside their house to ensure that they don't have that bug problem anymore. You need to know what type of face covering works the best. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below to some face masks that I believe are the best for, you know, any kind of pest control technician. But what I would actually recommend you do, that if you're applying pesticides in someone's home, one, the customer needs to leave. The customer needs to leave the house. They don't need to be there. They need to be outside, uh, either on a porch or on a, you know, in their car or maybe at someone else's house. But they don't need to be at their house when you're applying pesticides. That's number one. They shouldn't be there. And so you don't have to worry about contact with that person um, at all. But if you're inside their house, whether that person is home or not, you still are mandated by the state, at least in Virginia, to wear a face covering. So what kind of face covering is gonna be the safest and the best for you? 
I recommend using throwaway disposable surgical masks. The reason I recommend this is because, like I said, you can throw it away. Don't wear the same mask in every single house you go to. You may go through 10 masks a day. You may go through 15 or 20 masks a day. And typically, a box of masks only holds about 50 masks. So you're gonna have to think of investing a lot in these little face masks. But it's what, you're, what you have to do. So that, that's why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because I was panicked. I was uh, in a really bad state because I was having health problems from wearing a mask. I was actually experiencing nausea, dizziness, um, in fact, that day that I came out of that lady's house when I was wearing the uh, respirator, I uh, I saw a black halo all the way around. So it was like th this big tunnel vision. And that really scared me. And so I got on the phone and I talked to my wife and I was like, look, I've my wife is, has worked in medical. She's got a lot of experience in medical. And uh, so... She's done, a, she's done a whole lot in this. And so she said, well, what you need is you need a surgical mask because that's what they do in the hospital. They take surgical masks, and they throw them away. Once they contaminate their mask, they throw it away. They don't keep it. They don't, they don't wear the same mask. They throw them away. That's probably one of the number one waste things in a hospital are masks and gloves, So you, uh, which is now probably one of my number one waste materials are masks and gloves because I'm constantly throwing away a mask. But when you're thinking about your own health, you don't want to hurt yourself. You're applying chemical. You're using a pesticide. You're wearing gloves. You're wearing protective clothing. You're wearing long sleeve shirts. You're wearing long pants. You're wearing boots. You know, you're, wearing, you're, you're properly preparing your body for applying pesticides. So when you wear a face mask, you need to think about that too. What is the safest type of face mask to wear? What is the safest face covering to wear? And honestly, after all of my experience I, I really do go on with disposables these little cloth masks yes you can put your logo on it they look pretty cool and all but they are absolutely not safe to wear when applying pesticides you should absolutely not wear them if you are applying pesticides you should wear a surgical mask and throw it away a surgical mask is what everybody claims to be the best at stopping your particulate anyway so hopefully this video has been uh, helpful to you um, please leave me a comment below have you been having similar problems to me um, if you are having problems like I've been having consider wearing a throwaway paper mask and not wearing cloth masks so y'all have a great day I appreciate it uh, check out my live streams every Thursday night I'm there to answer any of your questions and I'll probably be going over this video this Thursday night as well because I know this is a hot topic and it is absolutely on the minds of most every uh, at least US citizens and probably people worldwide because I know this is a worldwide thing that we've been dealing with so y'all have a great night great day great morning whatever time of day wherever you are I hope you're enjoying yourself and I will see you later and enjoy your holiday season hope you had a good Thanksgiving hope you plan on having a good Hanukkah Christmas Kwanzaa whatever and uh, I'll see you Thursday, hopefully. Thanks.